My name is Steven Annie, and in this video, we'll be learning something new in Blender. If you're new to Blender, this is the best video for you. Now, in this video, I'll be teaching you the Blender interface and how to navigate it, and different shortcuts that you'll be using for the main things that you'll be doing within Blender. Now, when you open Blender for the first time, you'll see this screen. And here you have your general, you have your 2D animation, the sculpting, VFX, and video editing. Now this is the five these are the five major things you can do with Blender. So if you are trying to go for 2D animation, you can click here. But because we are working with our 3D animation, you can just simply click here. But I just don't want to go through that right now because I don't want to use any of this. I just want to simply click on this blank place. But before I do that, these are recent files you can be able to work with and if your laptop let's say crashed maybe you know, your work actually uh, turned off uh, without you saving your work you can try recovering it using this recover last session so now I'm going to click here to reveal the scene and this is the main blender window so here we'll have the 3d window this is where everything that you'll be building in your 3d world will be going into and over here we'll have our info window where you have different things like a file the edit okay and render and windows and help where you can be able to get some helps on the internet now this will enable you to switch to different kind of layouts you can be able to work with for animation for rendering for compositing and different things but we're not going into that for now now over here we'll have the outline window and the outline window will, en will enable us to see all the objects we have within the 3d scene so you can be able to name your objects properly and then you can be able to see them from here and you can do whatever you want to do with them here or you can even search for them here by typing let's say i want to find cube i can type cube here and i will find cube so you know if i have any particular character that was named i can type it here and find it this is usually used when you have a very dense scene where you can't even find this, this a particular object that is hiding somewhere now we'll have, here we'll have the property window where you have different properties like render and uh, format and other things even the world settings and uh, modifiers which are different things we'll be using when we're animating now let's go into the main thing we'll be using most of the times now here we'll have the select box and the select box usually is for selecting things so if you have it on you can click and drag to select anything that goes into that box that's the first way to select but then if you don't want to use that you can simply click on the object if you want to do multiple selection you select what you want hold and shift and if you want to select something else you click on that remember the shortcut we have started already shift for multiple selection you click hold down shift and click again on next thing and click something else that you want to have multiple selection now here we'll have a 3d cursor 3D cursor is actually used for setting the place that whatever object you're going to add will appear. So for example, now this is where the 3D cursor is. So if I add a new object or a new mesh, as we call it here, it will actually be in this particular place. So I want to make it appear over there. So what I will do is I will simply select my 3D cursor, click over here. Now the shortcut for adding objects is shift a all right but if you want to go the long way you can go for add mesh and cube all right so the object you're adding can be a curve or a surface or different kind of things i will be coming to do this more when we start our object mode modeling so right now i want to go into the mesh and add a cube mesh and if you notice it came up to this place if you try it again and click over here and shift a let's use a shortcut this time around shift a I will click on that shift a and I will click on cube and you actually see it appearing here so with this you can be able to add anything wherever you want the next thing we'll have is the move tool. so the move enables us to be able to move things within the particular scene that we're in so you can be able to click on this and drag it so if i put my mouse over this particular green this is the the axis i'm going on yeah, 
the y is actually the the green axis and then the x is the, is the red axis so you can drag it along that particular axis depending on wherever you want it to go now the shortcut for that is g so let's say for example i want to be able to move this on the y axis i'll press g and it can be able to move then i'll press y now it is locked on the y axis let's say i want to move it about two blender units i will just press two enter and it will move now let's say i want to move it five steps backwards now let me use this so you understand what is happening here i'm going to be using this to measure here so i'm going to do g y and minus five so if you look at the weight it came from here to over there all right so this is the negative so if you use negative it will go behind to go towards the back if you use positive it will actually go forward all right so now if i want to move it on the on the z axis i can press g z let's say uh, six and you actually have it move six steps forward and that's a measurement for that and i wouldn't want to go into measurements currently because you're actually trying to learn the blender interface but just know that this unit these are more like the blender units and they actually have a measurement in real life now here we have the rotation and the rotation it's you can use this tool to be able to rotate things on a particular axis so let's say for example i want to be able to rotate this on the z axis i want it to face this point to face over here i can simply use this to drag it or i can use the shortcut r z and let's say 45 and we'll actually have that so i have rotated it on the z axis for 45 degrees and then enter so if i want to rotate it on the let's say x axis r x can you see now it's going this way and i'll say x let's say 90 degrees you actually have it go 90 degrees on the x axis so it all depends on where you want to use it and how you want to use it now i'm going to remove all the rotation on it by pressing alt r on it and alt r is how you remove anything that you have any rotation you have done on that particular thing if you do alt g it will take it back to the center point here you can see what happened here so alt r or g or alt any particular shortcuts that you have used mostly it will actually work but not all the time there are ones that might be different so now we'll have here if i click here i can be able to also rotate this if i wanted to but let's leave that for now and go to scaling so i'll go to scaling and this is a tool for scaling things so you can scale things still on the axis so you can do z axis you can do that for y axis or for x axis depending on what you want to create so we'll be using this later to be able to build things and then you have also here where that will combine all the three different you know the location that's the move tool the rotation tool and the scale tool all at once so if you want to use them all at once you can be able to use them so that's the major thing i will be touching here now the major thing you have to also focus on is here if you click here you see that we're in the object mode we have other modes that will be working with but just know that this place must be in the object mode and make sure you don't touch it except you already know how to work with the edit mode which will be still be going to later now another thing that is very important are the things here so these are features that are very important because they enable you to be able to walk when you don't really have a mouse so now to be able to move around this scene i can be able to move around it by holding down my middle mouse button if i click down the middle mouse if i press down the middle mouse button the middle mouse button is a scroll the one that is scroll level you can scroll forward or backwards so when you press it down and move it it can move around your scene okay so it has for moving around and navigating around your scene if you want to go close an object you can scroll forward or backwards that is how to zoom 
into a particular scene or zoom out now if you want to let's say i want to focus more on this because this one is the main thing the center of my scene i can hold down shift press down my middle mouse button and pan that is how we pan now when you don't have a mouse to do these things i just did right now you can simply use your z this particular tool here to navigate around to be able to move around your scene so if you want to move around your video is usually called the viewport or the 3d viewport so you can be able to actually move around the different parts of your scene so i'm using the mouse as you're clicking around it i'm moving it i'm holding down my my left click and then moving around to be able to move around the different parts of the, the 3d shape then over here you have the zoom so if you click on the zoom click it down and move forward it will zoom in click it down and move backwards so but if you don't have if you don't want to use this you have to use your scroll wheel to scroll forward and backwards so but i don't if you don't if you are using the laptop and you don't have the mouse yet you can simply use this to go forward and backwards then also you can be able to use the pan here to move around okay so but if you have your mouse you hold down shift middle mouse button and then shift and the middle mouse button and then you move it around then over here is for view, viewing your scene from the camera so if you click here it will just go directly to the camera so the shortcut to this is zero on the numpad if you press that on numpad now the zero i'm talking about is not the zero above the where you have your alphabet keys at the top of it where you have numbers so you have q w e r then you have one two three at the top that zero at that line is not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about the zero at the right part of your keyboard. If you have a num keep it does a numbers keyboard with the numbers lock by the right side of your keyboard. But if you don't have that, the only thing you should do is to click on this edit, go to preference, and then come over here, and then you can simply say emulate num keypad. And this will enable you to use that particular one let me do that again let me remove this it will enable you to be able to use this to press zero and it will actually act as the zero and norm keypad so in case you don't have the norm keypad you just have the regular keyboard with just numbers at the top then you should use this to make sure that you turn your zero into the zero for the camera this will come in handy for a lot of things you'll be doing later in your work now another thing you want to focus on is if you go back to the edit and preference you look at here emulate three button mouse if you check this box it will enable you to do something so if you remember i told you that when you're navigating around you hold on the middle mouse button and you pan around your scene but in a case where you don't have the mouse Another thing you can use to pan around instead of using this is also to use Alt and click and then you click around. That's when you turn on that particular thing I just turned on right now. And that's the major thing that you want to pay attention to. Over here you have the timeline because all the animations will be done through here. Now I wouldn't want you to bother too much about this because we'll be touching, we'll be talking about the, the, the animation later in details. And here you have your tools and that's what it's actually called in case i didn't say it at the beginning the other thing you want to pay attention to if you press n you will see these particular properties coming out here and these appear add-ons and other kind of things will also appear but still just know that there is something here and the shortcut to get it is n the shortcut for this one is t you can bring it out and you can hide it n is for the one at the right side now these things will come in handy when we start doing animations and we want to keyframe things like our rotation or our location or our scale here and that's for basically our animation now over here you have where you switch your viewport shading so this will not be entirely important right now because we will be working basically on the normal viewport that's the solid view port shading but when we actually 
go to start doing something more complicated, we'll go to the material viewport, the rendered viewport, which will actually show us how our work will look like when we're done. So I will stop here for now and I'll see you in the next class.